In Pal World, there are many different partner abilities that the various pals have. Today, I want to go over which ones are good, which ones are useful, and which ones you should consider upgrading in Pal World. Oh my god, it's a Charlie Puppy update! Some of you may have seen the 2,500 subscriber update that included the puppy reveal of Charlie, and you feel bamboozled that you didn't get any more doge picks. Quick update, Charlie went to the vet, he's doing just fine. He's extremely energetic and somehow he learned how to pole vault from this couch into the other room. And when I was like, well, how did you do that? He was very happy to show me how he did it. Just to let you know, he is absolutely fine. 100% fine. We moved this couch, we moved things out of the way and we're gonna need to get a bigger fence and we move this chair out of the way and I don't want him to be able to do this because then nothing in the house is ever gonna be safe and as a puppy we're told to keep his world small while he wants to break down the barriers of his wall and owning a puppy is a magical journey every day. Okay, Austin John Gaming. Uh, tomorrow's video I'm doing tips that you guys have learned throughout your time playing. There's already a bunch of great comments that have been left that are going to be featured, but if there's anything in particular you've learned throughout your time, leave a comment down below with the words, one word, pro tip, P-R-O-T-I-P, and then what your tip is. That way I can feature these specific comments and who actually left them, and I think it's gonna be a fantastic learning experience for all of us. Great, there is a very long and detailed Google Sheet accumulated by the data miner who's doing most of this in Power world, Bob Blade, and it's going to be available on a Reddit post that I'm going to link down below. I saw this and this is information that is so good that I do not want to change the interpretation of or come up to my own results of because how it is summarized here is absolutely perfect. I previously talked about all of the different mounts that are going to be getting speed boosts from increasing your partner skill level. Partner skill level being when you go to the PAL condenser, there's a variety of different PALs that when you get them up to partner skill level 2, which is one star, three, four, and five, which is four star, these various pals are going to be having an inherent speed boost to how fast that they are going to be moving. This does not increase their stamina or the amount of time that they stay in the air. It only increases the distance that they cover over that stamina time. If you want a much more detailed video on how these mounts work, the speed that they can go to, and which ones you should be focusing on, there's gonna be a card in the top corner, so check that out at the end of the video. I still think it's so weird that there are so many that are going to be on the ground, and there's only one while flying, and it's Nightwing. Maybe because it's so slow that it needs that 20% boost? I don't know. And as you can see, once you capture four additional pals and condense them, you get a 10% boost, and then it's gonna be a marginal increase of 2%, 5%, until you hit the final level which is another 5%, considering this needs four, this needs 16, this needs 32, and this needs 64, that four is very easy to come by. Let's move on. The next portion to talk about is a hidden stat of player attack boost while mounted. Chillet's partner ability makes it so when you attack, you're gonna be doing dragon damage. Univolt, electric, Pyrin, fire, Pyrin, knock, dark. Also, Maraith is dark, Beacon, electricity, Ragnarok, fire, Azerobe, water, although I would never wanna actually sit on that thing because then I have to hear it move. and Hell's of Fur is going to be dark. It's not just an elemental switch. It's going to be an elemental switch and a damage boost. It increases the player's attack by X percent and additionally changes the player's damage to element. Meaning that if you were to mount a Chillet who the alpha is going to be at a level 11, you're not only going to be doing dragon damage, you're also going to be getting a 50% boost to your attack damage that you do. Now if you happen to be attacking a pal who's going to be weak to dragon, keep in mind in your player guide on the options page it tells you all of the elemental advantages and disadvantages. Dragon is going to be super effective to dark. Not only are are you now doing one and a half damage to dark type pals? Your element changed to dragon, which is now super effective, and now you get another boost on top of that. This makes a lot of sense considering that now the opposing pals are going to be focusing only on you and your pal. It's not like you can keep distance and use one to kite or bait, and you're not going to be having two separate entities attacking. Instead, it's one unit. So that 50% boost 
kind of makes sense. Once you learn how to balance your three different attacks with your pal and your actual damage, whether you're using a crossbow or some sort of firearm, you're going to be able to do amazing damage that way. It's also worth noting that the legendary pal Frostallion and Frostallion Knocked also swap the player's damage type to ice and dark respectively, but there is no attack bonus. And once again, like we saw with the different mounts, that first level of just sacrificing four additional pals, you're getting that 50% boost. Your next 16 is only a 5% boost, and then a 10, and then a 15, and then a 20. There's going to be three different pals who have partner abilities that's going to increase the damage that you do, it being elemental damage, and you do not have to physically mount that pal. That being Nox, Wixen, and Anubis. Nox for dark, Wixen for fire, Anubis for earth. However, the boost to the damage is significantly less. Level 1 is only a 5% boost to your damage. Level 2 is 6, 7, 8, and then level 5 is 10. So really, really big diminishing returns on these. But once again, if you are going to be attacking a pal, like you have a Wixen, and Wixen's running around doing a whole bunch of fire damage, now your attacks are also going to be fire type as well. And if you're attacking a grass type pal, you're going to be doing fantastic damage. Now, if you were to combine that with the idea of using poison arrows, now you have poison arrows who are doing fire damage, and you're getting more bang for your buck as your DPS damage per second. Verdash, everyone's favorite grass type Cinderace, is also going to be granting an elemental swap to grass, but with a movement speed to yourself and to it, starting at 20% and landing at 40% instead of an attack increase. Carry weight. In my video that went over early game tips, I mentioned a Kadava is the best first pal to get just because of the variety of things that it can help you with at your base. One of those things is that it's going to increase your carry weight. And at level 1, which requires no additional pals, it increases it by 50 pounds? Kilograms? 50 units of weight. And that gets upgraded to 60, 70, 80, and 90. Also, there's going to be Lunaris, Bron Cherry, its Aqua variant, King Paka, Ice King Paka, Wombo, and Wombo Botan. With Wombo and Wombo Botan having the largest carry weight increases of 120 that scales up to 160. While editing, hearing myself say Wombo so much, the only thing I could think of is Patrick saying, you know SpongeBob, Wombo. I Wombo, you Wombo, he, she, they Wombo. That's the only thing I keep hearing in my head. Maybe good for your quartz and sulfur runs. Wombo's there for you. Do those stack? Right now my base carry weight is 1600. These videos are a great motivator to make sure that I go around and get all my technical manuals and I make all of the different saddles that I need. With the Wombo saddle, my carry weight now goes to 1720. And with the Wombo Botan, it now goes to 1840. So yeah, I could have both of them in my party and without even mounting them or taking them out or anything, they are going to be increasing that carry weight. Drop rate, this is a very handy one. So every single one of these pals who's going to be increasing the drop rate for specific types of pals is going to be activated when you have them as a pal and then increased by their star level. Pen King is going to be increasing drop rate bonuses for fire, Catrice for normal, Valet for earth, Elphadran for dark, Elphadran Aqua for fire, Cryolynx for dragon, Blaze Howl for leaf. What? Or is it actually called leaf? Have I not, do I not know this? Blaze Howl knocked also for normal, Menace Sting for electricity, Phalaris for ice, and Orserk for water. Oh, uh, that's probably why people are in the tips video say that they use Orserk for farming up all their power fluids. That makes a lot of sense. Just having them is gonna be a 40% increase at level one, and then that increases to 50, 60, 70, and 80%. With how the in-game multiplier works, like for PAL appearance rate making it 1.5, that basically means you're always gonna have that one times and then a 50% chance at a bonus. The original poster also believes that it's gonna be following the same idea, that Fox Sparks has a 100% chance to drop exactly one leather, and with partner skill level one to Pen King, the drop rate is gonna be boosted to 140%. Since this exceeds 100%, you're guaranteed one leather, plus you have a 40% chance to get one additional leather. We also have a category here called Mounted Element Boost, which percent increase to element type damage. For example, Grintail is normal, Dino Awesome Leaf, Dino Awesome Lux, Electricity, you could read the rest of this thing, ending with Frost Stallion and Frost Stallion Knock being Ice and Dark respectively. 
Level 1 is a 50% increase to damage, and level 5 is a 100% increase to damage. Now this bonus applies to both the Mounted Pal and the Trainer. If the Trainer has an attack that matches the element boost, it will be boosted too. The important part is that the Pal itself receives this bonus as well, meaning a Mounted Pal with this boost will do 50 to 100% more damage with their attacks that match the element bonus type. This makes these Pals as combat mounts with the manual ability usage especially powerful, better than letting them fight automatically. And there's a synergy with Frost Stallion and Noct, because both are going to swap the player's damage type to Ice and Dark respectively, just without the attack increase that typically comes along with that. This means that the player's attacks would fully benefit from this element damage boost to 50 to 100% as well. This makes Frost Stallion good for both mounted player damage and mounted pal damage. So while Frost Stallion and Noct don't give you a 50% boost to your damage and change the element, it changes the element and therefore gives you a 50% boost to damage. Same same but different, but still same. Now we get on to party buffs. These bonuses apply to any matching pal that comes in the condition in your party. The buffer only needs to be in your party to apply these bonuses to your active pal. These bonuses stack additively if you have multiple buffers. For example, if you have Spark It, then all electrical pals in the party receive a buff. Ruby is fire, Hookertees is dark, Kremis normal, so on and so forth, keep it going down and down. The base is 10 all the way up to level 5 being 20%. Making a full team of buffers combined with one strong active pal is a way to make the absolute strongest single pal you can. Combine that with the mounted element boost above for an additional 100% damage to deal the highest possible pal damage. Four Foxicle and one Frost Stallion mounted is probably the highest pal damage outside of special moves like the Penguin Launcher. There's a lot of elementals in here except for two of them that's going to be specific different pals. B guard for Elizabeth and Sui for Sweepa. Sui, while in team Sweepa stats will be increased. And if we look at Sweepa, we can see that its attack goes from 190 to 212. In addition, its defense goes from 136 to 179. That has to do with the 12% from the Sui and 20% from my passive skill, Burly Body. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't also talk about that there currently exists a glitch that while on top of a Sweepa, you drop a Sui from the party, move away from it, dismount, pick up the pal, get back on top of the sweeper, and you're gonna see that the passive skill is going to stack. If I wanted to do it again, I drop the Sui, move away from the Sui, I dismount, collect the Sui, I get back on top of Sweepa. Looking at Sweepa stats, it has gone up now to 36%. And yes, you can do this over and over and over and over and over and over. Probably not how it was designed to work, just saying. It's also worth noting that for Elizabeth and Sweepa themselves, as opposed to B Guard and Sui, if you increase Elizabeth or Sweepa's overall level to a total of 8% increase, but 5% at level Two, which is weird that there's nothing at level one. Oh, level one makes it possible. Level two gives you a 5% boost all the way up to 8% at level five. Makes sense. Let's talk about farming animals. Upgrading the partner skill of farming animals increases the number of items they find. They have a minimum and maximum that they can find as displayed here. So when Lamble is gonna be finding wool at level one, the base level, it's always gonna find one. But as you upgrade that to level five, it can find as little as one or as much as five every time that that skill is triggered at the ranch. Chickpea is gonna be finding eggs, Kremis is gonna be finding wool, but at a much higher rate than Lamble. So if you're ever in need of wool, you should definitely take Lamble out of the ranch and switch it to Kremis when you can. It's gonna be two, three at a base level and two, six at the highest level. Mao and Mao Chris are gonna be finding money anywhere from 10 to 50 coins a not great way to make money. Mozzarina is going to be finding milk, one through five. Willet Pop is going to be finding sweets. Caprity is going to be finding berries. All of these are one through five. Melpaca is going to be finding wool at the exact same rate to that Kremis is, so you could switch to Melpaca as well, and you probably should because they're even in the starting area. Bee Guard is going to be finding honey at a rate of one to five. Flam Bell is going to be finding fire organs, one to five. Fantastic for making fire arrows. And Sibilex is going to be finding cloth at one to one, all the way up to one. Now, find cloth is actually the higher cloth. It's not just wool. So you're gonna be finding the nice refined stuff. That's what you're gonna need for those nice pal beds later on. Vixie, however, has an increased pool of items that it can find. At its base level, it's gonna be finding one sphere or arrow or 10 money. At level two, that increases the quantity 
from one sphere to one to two spheres, one to two arrows, 10 to 20 money. At level three, we're looking at two to three spheres, two to three arrows, 10 to 30 money. Level four is interesting because now your pal sphere resets back down to only finding one. Arrow goes up to three to four. Money goes up to 10 to 40. However, now you can also find mega spheres. Level five is not going to increase your mega pal sphere level, but it's going to increase your pal sphere, arrow, and money. And now some last and final touching notes. There are two pals that increase your defense as little as 5% to 10% for War Sect, or 7% to 14% for Menace Sting. Rabunny's work speed bonus applies to the weapon workbench and weapon assembly one and two. Oh, it increases its efficiency. Well, that's hot garbage. The mounted bonus to logging slash mining only applies to the pal itself and not the player. Using your pickaxe from the back of a mount gets no bonus. Okay. Kumos gives an increase of 10 to 20% increase for player logging. If there were multiple levels of wood in the game, I could see that being helpful, but there's not. Life steal from Lavander and Felbat heals for 2% to 6% of damage dealt. I mean, combining that with things that can actually boost your attack might be helpful. The weak spot damage bonus Bonus from Robin Quill and Van Worm is increased by 20% to 40%. Note you must be mounted for Van Worm's weak spot bonus to apply. Warsec's partner skills description is incorrect. It does not make the player's attack fire. Instead, it increases the player's fire resistance by 5 to 10%. Increases player's defense and applies fire damage to the player's attacks. Yeah, no, that is not not proper phrasing that's not what that does at all okay and gorat's attack bonus while berserk is massive 50 to 200 percent i mean it's fantastic just having all of this information in one place and now you have it in one place as a resource if there's anything you need to see in particular some of these things should have deep dives on and and i may be trying out some of this stuff here in the future guys if you found this information helpful do me a favor hit the thumbs up button down below again if there's any big helpful tips that you have for play in this game seasoned and new use the word a pro tip in the comment when leaving a comment on this video and I'm gonna be doing that video tomorrow thank you so much for being here if you haven't done so be sure to subscribe until next time Austin John gaming out